Now before we get into the form and function of how you go about loading data into Timeline PI, let's talk a little bit about the data requirements. So the file that you can see on screen is a sample transaction log that would represent data we would look to get out of something like an invoice processing workflow. Okay, and it's essentially a transaction log where each row in the file represents a single event or action that's taken place as a part of processing those invoices. Now the key here, and this goes for any data input that we're looking to, to put into the system, is that we have three required fields. We need to make sure we have a date time or a time stamp for when any given event has occurred. Next, we're going to want to make sure we have a process identifier. In this case, we're talking about the invoice number. This is going to join together all the different events that occur as a part of processing an invoice into that same context. And lastly, we're going to want an event or activity name. And in this file, it's the stage column. That tells us what happened to the invoice at that point in time. And you can see some examples there. So as long as we can get those three required fields out of our source systems of record, we're able to source that data, load it into the tool, and recreate the digital instances of that business process, in this case of that invoice processing workflow. The other fields that you can see here, the things like vendor, clerk, location, department, source, those are going to be your attributes. Those are going to be what allows us to do things like filtering and contextual analysis. They're really going to give more, more of an interesting lens around things like root cause analysis when we get to that level. Okay, But those extra attribute fields are uh, optional. You can bring as many or as few of those extra fields as you'd like. The key really are those three fields to the left, making sure we have a timestamp, a process ID, and an activity or event name. As long as we can define those three fields out of our data set, we're able to load that data into the tool and start to automatically analyze that business process exactly as it occurred. The simplest way to begin uploading data in a Timeline PI is by either selecting the Upload Your Data or Upload button on the project screen. Once I've clicked that, I can now browse out to a file that's got my events-related data for the process that I'm looking to track and monitor. For this example, we'll bring in data that's related to an insurance claims process. Now I'll start by mapping the three required fields that we'll need for our analysis. The first being the timestamp field, which I'll map to date. And you see all this is done in a drag-and-drop fashion. Next, we'll map our timeline ID, or that unique identifier that's going to signify what we're looking to track and measure. In this example, we'd probably be mapping this to a claim number or a claim ID. Lastly, I'll want to map our event name, and we'll map that to our event field. This is going to signify what work was done at any given step in the process. Now, apart from these three required fields, we'll also want to map some other attributes or dimensional fields, ways that we're going to want to slice and dice, filter, or break down our data by. So we'll simply grab this purple new attribute field and drag it to a number of fields. And you'll see it'll inherit the header value from the column in our file. So I've mapped a few attributes. The last thing to mention is these green optional fields that we can see here, event category and event number. If you have a very large number of different unique events, you might want to map an event category field, which is going to allow you to group numbers of events together into a single category. And then also our event number field allows us to take events which may exist in the same process with an identical timestamp and choose exactly how we list them in what order by using this event numbering field. Those are both optional. So once I've mapped all the fields that I'm interested in bringing into the tool, I'll simply hit confirm and start upload and allow the tool to begin reconstituting the process and building all the forms of analysis and the models that we're going to go through as a part of our analysis.